what we now call Riverside, began in the fall of 2008 as a small Bible study in the living room of Brent and Elizabeth Bastins. Shortly after that, in November, we had a, a Thanksgiving feast of sorts in the backyard of Ben's Feast to discuss the future of that Bible study. Where did we want to go with it? What did we want to do? So after eating and praying and discussing, um, we, we voted unanimously to move forward to plant a church in Columbia. Um, we knew that we all wanted to be part of seeing God bring spiritual renewal to an over-church and under-gospel community. We didn't know what that would look like for us, um, but we believed that the gospel creates thriving communities um, that deeply impact their world, and that the church is God's vehicle in doing that um, for making disciples, transforming cities, and we were compelled um, to do this in Columbia and that we, we just really wanted to be a church that planted churches. And so we were thrilled that everyone in that little Bible study was all in. And with that conviction, we began with a steering committee that was made of a mixed group of men and women and marrieds and singles that really represented the heart of our tiny church plant. And the first thing we did is located a place for us to meet, which was at Elmwood Park. And a very sketchy room called the What You Doing Club. And from there we moved to the slightly more spacious Pacific Park. We spent our first Sunday locked out, uh, outside in the rain and under a covered porch. We still sang songs to Jesus. It was there at the Whaley neighborhood that we began to take our first steps, clumsy but faithfully, uh, to, 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 to serve our neighbors and to partner with area churches. It was also during this time that Marjorie Hobbs really laid the foundation for what gospel communities look like in our small group structure that has proved uh, so fruitful for us. But the space at Pacific Park was limited, especially for our children. Um, so that summer we began looking for uh, a space that was more suitable to publicly launch um, our public wor worship services. In planning and organizing that as a steering committee, making decisions together and sometimes fighting together, really bonded us as a community. And on the evening of October 9th, 2009, we launched our first public worship service uh, there at Wesley Memorial United Methodist Church. So over the next year, we met in the evenings, which proved to be a bit of, the str of a struggle, because in the South, people prefer church on Sunday mornings. We um, we not only didn't receive a lot of visitors in the evening, um, but we, we lost a lot of our core team members, people who were really precious to us um, and a part of our, of our family. Um, so we gained precious few and we lost a lot of precious people. But during that time, the Lord did open a door at Allen at Court. It was one of our small groups decided to make that a focus for ministering in our city. And, since we weren't meeting on Sunday mornings, we met there instead and, and, and with basketballs and sidewalk chalk and snacks and the Bible, we came and we shared truth and we shared our lives with the children there. Later that year, we did a coat drive and then in 2011, we did a, a vacation Bible school that proved far more successful than any of us, I think, imagined. Out of that came a boys' Bible study. And that continued through 2012 when Chad Eskew picked up the reins of that and led that uh, into what it is now, which is a small group community that meets on Sunday evenings at Allen Benedict Court. But it became evident that we needed a space that could accommodate Sunday mornings. In January 2011, having been welcomed by Young Life, we gathered in their club room on the third floor of the Kaysen Group in downtown Columbia. This was a great space for us and we began to grow almost immediately with visitors starting on our very first Sunday there. Doubling from 40 to 80 adults in eight months, we had to move <clears throat> to a bigger room downstairs by August. Our kids' ministry had exploded. In 2010, we were ministering to 15-some kids, and by the time we left Case and Group at the end of 2012, we had over 70 children. And during 2011, we hired our first part-time uh, worship leader, Joel Boyce, who had replaced our own Stephen Moore, who had in turn replaced Jesse Schellenbarger, who had replaced Kenny Camacio. And then Joel himself moved 
the next year following Stephen Moore to Charlotte. Fortunately, the Lord raised up Chris Montminy, who's been our worship leader since, and Chris has assured me that he's not going anywhere. It was also in 2012 that uh, the Lord uh, used Nate O'Neill's vision for a leadership cohort to develop men to be leaders for the church and in the church. And since that time, uh, we've seen 40 men come through that cohort, most of whom now are leading a small group or part of a core team of a small group or playing key roles of leadership on Sunday mornings. So having outgrown our space at Kaysen, uh, we moved to the museum in 2013, and it was during that same time that we made our first full-time hire. We brought on Landon Jones as our administrative director, who now serves as our uh, assistant pastor. So with 90-some kids on the roster, we also decided to hire a children's ministry director. Erica Kimry came on in January of 2014, who took the reins from the tireless and wonderful Dorothy Moore, who we all know. During all of this, Riverside was led by an interim leadership team made up of Josh Parks, Nate O'Neill, Daniel Ellis, um, who have been a wonderful support for many years. In June of this year, Riverside took a major step forward after much prayer and established our first elders, five Christ-loving, servant-hearted men. Michael Capaldo, Joshua Tarlotten, Eric Kimry, Landon Jones, Tony Bell, um, that I'm privileged to serve alongside with. In the summer of 2013, we took a major step forward in our vision to be a church planting church plant. Uh, we welcomed the Wilsons to Columbia and Greg came on as our first church planting resident. And now Greg and Christina are gearing up to transition to Manchester, England next year in order to plant a church there with another Acts 29 church. Most recently, God has been gracious and brought on the Greers. And so Braden and Christy came in August and their goal is to launch out as a church planting residency here, a new church plant in the Northeast part of our city in 2015. In 2009, we were one Bible study, one small group led by one mostly full-time pastor. We could all fit in one house for our annual Christmas parties, which we were able to do for a few years. And it's wonderful to see what Jesus has done to grow us, to deepen relationships, to benefit our neighbors, to make new disciples, and to raise up new leaders. It's what we prayed for from day one. So Jesus has been faithful in addition to 14 small group core team leaders and 50 some core team members of those small groups uh, with six elders shepherding the flock, two church planting residents. We've also had numerous uh, pastoral interns and assistants have come alongside and served us faithfully and so well. Men like Jason Harms and Clay Cromer and Wesley Bergeron and Stephen Justice. And of course, in addition to them, there have been countless faithful leaders who've spearheaded new ministries and served as heads of committees. Uh, folks like Emma Harms and Jesse Capaldo and, and Tina Bridgewater, uh, not to mention uh, countless individuals who have served in those ministries and have really carried the weight of the church plant forward. During our first five years of growing up, we haven't <laughs> always gotten it right. We definitely haven't. We made a lot of mistakes along the way. And even now, we stumble far more than we'd like. We are five years old and we act like it much of the time. We have struggled together through growing pains and personal heartache. But Jesus has been so good to us. And as we look forward to what's in store for our city in the months and years ahead, we are confident that the good work that the Lord has begun among us, He will finish. And we're so thankful that you are all a part of it. And here's our confidence that as we labor together uh, to love each other the way that Jesus has loved us. And as we strive by the power of His Spirit to serve each other and our neighbors and our city, uh, that God will work to change us, to change each other, to change our neighborhoods, to change our city, our, our region, our generation, and even our world for His glory.